Good morning, everyone. I'm just letting everyone's audio come in. My name is Jen. I am the community engagement individual for the Border Crossings Project, and I am happy to welcome you today, Family Day, Monday morning. You are taking time to learn and enjoy yourself, so that makes me really happy. So just to let you know, we are recording this. It's not going to be posted anywhere. It's just for historical, and you'll see that we have transcribing. So before we begin, I would like to, I'm going to wait a little bit because more people are coming in. This is amazing. Today's land acknowledgement, Tanisha is asking if she can do it. So I'm happy to hand over the reins and let her do that. All right. All right. So I'm going to be launching a poll just to see if anyone has, has been a part of our border crossings workshops before. So you'll see it here. I'm going to keep it up for a minute or so if you can please answer. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. All right. So because I'm not doing the land acknowledgement today, I'm just gonna go into saying we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. And by doing so, give respect to its first inhabitants. So we continue to respect this land before we move forward in today's workshop. A little about the Border Crossings Project. Borders are challenges that are phys faced physically, emotionally, and psychologically and spiritually. They can both connect and divide. Shared by the art of storytelling, recognizing and sharing these border crossings allows us to understand ourselves and others differently. Instead of groups and people separate, separated by arbitrary distinctions, we are all individuals who experience pivotal moments of change that shape and contours the narratives of our lives. So um, we are so happy to provide this for you and we hope to see and hear from you if you have any border crossing stories and we would love to see your art submission. So please, please follow us um, on Instagram. I have put it in the chat and tag us because we would love to see it all. Just wanted to let you know that of course the Border Crossings Project is generally funded by the Ontario Children Foundation through the programs the Ontario Arts Council and the City of Mississauga's Cultural Division. I am super excited to introduce Tanisha. Tanisha is going to teach us about mindfulness and um, West African Mandela. So I'm going to spotlight her. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. I've put you all on mute. So again, you can wave your hand, put your hand up or turn on your camera or in the chat and then I will ask Tanisha how can I turn off my closed captioning? Sorry, Heather, it's gonna stay on just so we're accessible for others. I'm not sure how to turn it off. Hello from Ottawa. So I will be reading all the comments. Tanisha, I'm gonna spotlight you. Have fun and enjoy. Perfect, perfect, excellent. Thank you so much, Jen. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining this Border Crossings Project workshop. I'm so excited to uh, be presenting to you today the West African Medicine Wheel of the Dagara Tribe of West Africa. But before we begin, I'd like to begin with uh, a land acknowledgement given that we are um, in enjoying the benefits of this beautiful land that uh, has um, been in the care of our Aboriginal First Nations. And so we would like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather and with the region of and on which the region of Peel operates. It is a part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississauga of the First Credit. And for thousands of years, Indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. 
And in particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabek, the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, the Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, and the land that is the home to the Métis people. And most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. And so we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. And by doing so, we give our respect to this land's first inhabitants. And as we move into today's workshop, I also wanted to begin this workshop with a traditional invocation, an invocation that you would find at the beginning of a West African ceremony. And in this invocation, we call upon the ancestors, those who have come before us and have dreamt of the freedoms that we enjoy today. And so I'll begin with this invocation and it goes, ancestors, 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 thank you for hearing our call. Thank you for your dreams of a better time, of a better life, of a better world. You are our closest allies and greatest emissaries between self and the creator. And so we call upon you to guide our every thought, our every word, our every sentence. For truly we cannot do this work alone. We need your help your guidance, your wisdom, your love, that we may stay true to our highest purpose and keep our promises for those for whom the work is intended. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you to creator and you for all of what you do for us in ways that are known and unknown. May this be so. May this be so. May this be so. Ashe. And Ashe means may this be so. So you've joined this workshop in order to learn a little bit more about the West African medicine wheel. I, um, a few months ago, several months ago, began painting uh, the West African medicine wheel just as a personal project of mine as I had been learning to come back to my roots, come back to my indigenous heritage my family had begun to draw its family tree and um, my descendants from Jamaica had actually come from the transatlantic slave trade all the way from West Africa in Ghana. And so it is very much likely that my ancestors have come from this tribe called the Dagara tribe of West Africa in a village area, a geographical territory in West Africa near Ghana called Burkina Faso. And so I began to paint the medicine wheel. I brought a version of it that I had created myself. Can you see? And it contains the five elements of the Dagara cosmology, of their worldview. The five elements are fire, which is represented by the color red, the first element of creation. The next element is water, represented by the color blue. The color green represents the element of nature, and white or gray represents the element of mineral. 
And at the center, we have the yellow, which represents the elements of earth. And so today we'll dive a little bit deeper into what each of these mean. We'll talk a little bit about the Dagara tribe itself and their worldview. And I hope that you can learn something to take back with you and perhaps educate your peers about this important part of, of, of African history, of Black history. We have such a diverse amount of knowledge and wisdom that is to be shared from West African history. And so that's my goal for us today during this workshop, to bring traditional storytelling from my ancestors and to transmit the knowledge, transmit the wisdom for the benefit of your own spiritual journey, your own mental health, for the use of mindfulness. And so I'll begin by talking a little bit about the Dagara medicine wheel. The Dagara tribe um, of the country of Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso means land of the great ancestors, is in West Africa and it has a culture that is thousands of years old. We call cultures that span the, the length of um, human history as indigenous. So before the wars and civil battles that resulted from the 400 year period of the Atlantic slave trade and European colonialism, the Dagara culture flourished throughout what Europeans called the Gold Coast of West Africa. And despite the spread of organized religions like Islam and Catholicism, the elders of the Dagara communities, the priests and the priestesses, found ways and means to hold on to their ancient beliefs and practices and wisdoms. There was a great deal of preservation of the traditions of the Dagara tribe through storytelling, from passing on the wisdom through word of mouth, from parents to children, from elders to the younger generation, from priests and priestesses to their apprentices. And for many centuries, the ancient wisdom of the Dagara people provided them with a very powerful tool and technology, so to speak, a spiritual technology for healing and for human evolution, for the development of the human soul, we could say. And their wisdom is a technology just like the computer or other electronic media to us. It supported their quality of life. It supported their sense of being, their sense of purpose. And in this 21st century, quantum and theoretical physicists are now starting to discover some universal truths which the Dagara and other indigenous peoples all over the world have actually known for many lifetimes. And an example of this within the Dagara spiritual, spiritual system is their creation story. A creation story in the study of religion is called a cosmogony a cosmogony and it's basically the 
origin story of the universe, of the earth, how things are created. And for the Dagara people, you will find some elements actually of the Big Bang Theory in their creation story. You'll find elements of parallel universes, quantum physics, all explained by their indigenous spirituality. Even the theory of evolution and personal development. As I began to dive a little deeper into the spirituality of my ancestors, I learned about the essential tools of the Dagara cultural medicine bag from the teachings of two particular elders who bravely traveled to North America to begin sharing the wisdom of their ancestors of the Dagara tribe. And these two prominent teachers go by the names of Maladoma Patrice Somme and Sobonfu Somme. Both of these two teachers have been the most prominent scholars and storytellers from the Dagara tribe sharing their wisdom in North America, they've been speaking and writing um, countless books and articles on the wisdom of their indigenous tribe and spirituality. And so they carry on the legacy of the Dagara people throughout Europe and the United States. So Bon Fusome has actually since passed on, but Maladoma Patrice Somme still remains with us and he continues to teach West African spirituality, the spirituality of the Dagara people of Burkina Faso and also spiritual divination, the use of oracles through cowrie shells to tell the future and to help look into a person's spiritual path and purpose. And Maladoma Somme has best-selling books. He's been teaching internationally, speaking internationally. And he also has recorded lectures that you can listen to if you would like to learn more about the Dagara tribe and their teachings and storytelling. I encourage you even after this workshop to do a little bit of research into it and maybe pick up a couple of his books and listen to some of his teachings just to hear directly from the mouth of an elder, the traditional storytelling of the Dagara people. And Maladoma Somme is most popular for teaching about the medicine wheel and its power to transform human pain, human suffering into purpose, into meaning. And we'll speak a little bit more about that later, but this is one of his most foundational teachings, the medicine wheel, the elements of fire, water, earth, nature, mineral, and the embedded teachings that each of these elements has for all of us, not just for the Dagara people. And these elements can be used as a spiritual technology as applied knowledge. That's what I mean when I say technology in the spiritual sense. It's applied knowledge, a tool for self-inquiry, for self-discovery and for purpose. Now, before I begin to talk a little bit more about the medicine wheel itself and how it supports 
human growth and healing, we have to talk about how the medicine wheel itself had come into being. And in order to understand how the medicine wheel came into being, we must go back to the origin story, the indigenous tribal view of the world and the universe, the modern conveniences of Western and Westernized cultures that we take for granted are really not that old. We must go back to began, how our ancestors understood and explained the world to themselves and to their children. We must understand how before the creation of modern technologies like, let's say, the steam engine, uh, industrialization. Before all of these things happened, before modern technology, our ancestors, indigenous peoples, had a direct connection to nature. And on a daily basis, it was something that they connected to, their understanding that they were not separate from nature, that nature was a part of the self and self is a part of nature. So before supermarkets, before microwaves, before central heating and air conditioning, Amazon Prime, smartphones and Netflix, we have to look at how the Dagara people of West Africa survived without all of that. And like all indigenous peoples or first peoples, first nations, the Dagara people did not write, they did not read or do complex mathematics or anything like that, but they survived for years. They survived for millennia facing all kinds of weather, natural disasters, extreme earth changes, and even devastating violence and brutality of European colonialism and imperialism. They basically survived all of that without the support of technology and the news. And they communicated with one another very efficiently through their oral traditions. So what exactly is it that enabled indigenous people like the Dagara tribe of West Africa to stay alive, to survive, and even to thrive on their own as a tribe, as an independent, sufficient, self-sufficient self people on this planet without the modern conveniences that we enjoy today. And to put it simply, it's their belief in and their, their reverence for the coexistence of the physical and the spiritual worlds. They're together, the physical world and the spiritual worlds. The indigenous worldview, their understanding of the nature of earth and the universe is rooted in their spirituality, in their awareness of and their caring for the soul, the individual soul that is born in each person, in every individual. And it's believed by the Dagara people that every person had come to this earth with a specific inborn purpose to fulfill. To the Dagara people and other indigenous people, being alive basically means walking a spiritual path. 
There's no separation between living and being a spiritual person. It's a cultural expression of living. And their spirituality was practiced in order to foster and to maintain a harmonious and a peaceful, loving relationship with other humans, other villages, other cultures and tribes. And most importantly, between the physical and the metaphysical world, between what we can hear, what we can see, what we can touch and taste and smell and sensed and felt within our hearts and souls. And although spiritual practices may be used in fear and anger as it was by European colonialism in an attempt to control a situation and control people, large masses of people, Dagara spirituality was not designed for cultural dominance to dominate over other people. Dagara spirituality is a personal, individual practice for bettering oneself, improving the community. And so it's not a spirituality that can be used to be distorted and taken advantage of to dominate over other people. Like some of the major religions have been used throughout colonialism and throughout the transatlantic slave trade. And all indigenous spiritualities, including African spirituality is deeply rooted in the belief that the earth, the oceans, the plants, the animals, all humans have come from the same source. There's no separation between humans and the natural world. That's a very important part of indigenous spirituality, not just West African spirituality. And this is in direct conflict with the worldview of modern Western cultural religions, just as in, let's say the 17th and the 18th centuries during what was called the Age of Enlightenment, one of the major goals was to conquer nature. This is a very European and dominant colonial worldview to conquer nature. This is a complete opposite of how the Dagara people and other indigenous people thought. Nature wasn't considered to be something to be conquered, to be dominated, to be controlled. They believe that nature is to be revered and honored and to be worked with. Nature is something to be flowed with, not dominated. Nature is to be sustained. And this is why the Dagara medicine wheel is so important. It's a spiritual tool that enables us to remember and to honor that sacred connection to the universal elements of fire, water, earth, minerals, stones, bones, and shells, and the evolving entities of nature, which are the plants, animals, and humans. The origins of the Dagara medicine wheel is actually told through a creation story. As I mentioned earlier, a creation story is called a cosmogony. And most Western people 
they only know the story of Adam and Eve, you know, the first humans in biblical texts. But every indigenous culture has a story of its own of how the earth, of how the animals, how humans came into being. The Dagara creation story is essential as a part of their oral storytelling, of their tradition. And usually when a story is being told, the storyteller is accompanied by a drummer. And since this is coming from indigenous West Africa, the storyteller would be accompanied by a djembe or potentially a talking drum. And that drummer would give musical emphasis and would encourage a call and response when telling the story. Storytelling in Indigenous culture is meant to be engaging and to connect the storyteller to the audience. They all participate together in the telling of the story. And what I'm about to share with you isn't actually written down in an official story as let's say the Bible or other sacred texts of world religions. Many indigenous cultures don't have that text to support the telling of a creation story. It's all shared by word of mouth, by passing on the knowledge from family member to children, from elders to the younger generation. The medicine wheel provides such a powerful healing tool to those who engage with it. And I'll share that creation story with you now. So once upon a time, before time began, there was a huge ball of divine fire flying and traveling through the outer limits of deep space. This divine ball of fire was traveling tremendously fast. And I mean so fast that no human could ever imagine how fast that ball of fire was going. And because that divine fire was traveling so very fast, it actually tore a hole, a huge hole in the other world. The other world, you say, what other world? Well, I'm talking about the world that exists right next to ours. Most humans are unable to see that other world. So from out of this other world, divine fire ripped open a hole in the other world and out poured the most beautiful and precious thing that divine fire had ever seen. It was called precious water. And divine fire fell in love at first sight. The precious water 
fell right into the open arms of divine fire for she had been sleeping for such a long, long time. She woke up with a jerk of her precious head and looked up at divine fire and said, hey, who are you? And divine fire was so taken over by her loveliness, his heart began bursting with passion that he responded back to his beloved without blinking an eye. And he said, precious water, I've come to marry you and be with you for eternity. Precious water was at first surprised and taken aback, but then she remembered that she had dreamt of him during her long eternal sleep. Of course, she said, happily, let's go fly, sing, dance, and play. So divine fire and precious water began to do their cosmic dance and play all over this universe. They, they sang their love songs and rolled around in their eternal space, just having a good old time. And you know what happens when beloveds get to singing and dancing and rolling around? Something gets created. So before you know it, divine fire and precious water gave birth to a new being and they decided to call their child Magnificent Earth. When the parents of Magnificent Earth first gazed upon their newborn, they were overwhelmed with joy. They were overwhelmed with happiness and gratitude. Divine fire decided he was going to always watch over and protect magnificent earth by placing a part of himself above her and also inside of her heart. Precious water decided she was always going to nurture and caress her child by placing a part of herself over magnificent earth like a blanket. Also because she loved divine fire so much. She said that she would visit him above by transforming herself into clouds. She would even find pathways into the earth to support him in her heart. And so it was that magnificent earth was protected and nurtured by precious water and divine fire. They were a truly happy and loving family. But one day, magnificent earth grew sad. She was lonely because she didn't have any playmates. And when her parents heard her lament, they knew exactly what to do. So one day they all got together and they did a five day ritual of singing and dancing and playing. And you know what happens when folks come together and 
have a good time like that, right? Something gets created. And so divine fire, precious water, and magnificent earth created awesome minerals, which took the form of mountains, boulders, caves, rocks, crystals, and sand. Now magnificent earth was so happy and excited to have her first playmates. She was having so much fun all the time now and she wanted more. So one day she asked her parents to join her and awesome minerals to create more playmates. And once again, Another five day long ritual of singing and dancing and playing was performed. And I think you know by now what happens when folks come together to have a good time like that. Something gets created. And so it was that divine fire, precious water, magnificent earth, and awesome minerals created bountiful nature. Bountiful nature took the forms of living creatures that could roam and play all over magnificent earth. And this is why we have the healing plants, tremendous trees, the beautiful flowers and the amazing animals with so many playmates and so much fun going on all the time, you can't imagine that magnificent earth wouldn't be satisfied, but she wasn't. And she wasn't alone in her feelings. Her mineral and nature playmates also felt that something else was missing. So once again, a five day long ritual was held with such singing and dancing and playing that no human could ever imagine. And of course, once again, you know what happens when folks come together and have a good time like that, something gets created. And so it was at the end of the fifth day of unimaginable joyous ritual that the divine fire, the precious water, the magnificent earth, the awesome minerals, and the bountiful nature with her healing plants, tremendous trees, beautiful flowers, and amazing animals, all created the blessed humans. So for all of you listening to me right now, know this truth of who and what you come from. Remember that you have been loved, sung, danced, and played into existence. Always remember and never forget that you are divine, you are precious, you are magnificent, awesome, beautiful, healing, tremendous, beautiful, amazing, and blessed. And so it is. Ashe. So this is the creation story of the Dagara people of West Africa. How the earth, how the universe, how the five elements of the medicine wheel had come into being. And I invite you to create a medicine wheel of your very own. You can take a piece of paper, take a canvas that's blank, and 
we'll begin drawing it together. On your piece of paper, I invite you to draw a big circle. Let's see if I can show you here on my laptop. So, big circle. No, I don't think. You can keep going, going down, down, Tanisha. I think you can um, pull it down more. Pull it down more? Yeah, you can pull it down more. Your laptop, okay. yeah, great. Thank you. There we go, I tilt it up. So draw a circle and make sure that you've got five, the five colors. So those colors would be red for fire, blue for water, green for nature, yellow for earth, and white for minerals. So draw your circle. I'll give you some time to do that. And once you've drawn your circle, you can draw a smaller circle on the inside. So just like how you see here, a couple of larger circle and then a smaller circle on the inside. A smaller circle will represent the element of earth. We've got that here. And once you've drawn your big circle and then your smaller circle in the center, I invite you to divide the bigger circle into four. So I'll show you. I'll just do it here. So it should look like this. Okay, so you've got one, two, three, four, and five in the center. Tanisha, can you please reiterate the what the five colors represent again, please? Absolutely. So um, red represents the elements of fire. This is the first element, the initial spark of creation. The fire element also represents our purpose, our passions, our emotions. You may have heard it said before that one has fire in the belly. So that represents their passion, their purpose. When someone speaks with a lot of motivation, they have fire. Now, when someone has the element of fire that is out of balance within their lives, they may be prone to anger, to aggression, to overconsumption, maybe a little too much passion. If your fire is balanced, it represents knowing your purpose, having balanced passions, having balanced purpose within your life. So I invite you to select one of the four 
quadrants here and color it red. So I'm going to color this part here red for the fire elements. In the Dagara tribe, they believe that the fire element sits behind the belly button. So there again, we have that parallel between having fire in your belly, having passion. Okay. And once you've colored in the fire element, you can move on if you're ready. And pick up the color blue for the water element. And water represents how we relate to one another, how we give and receive love. It represents the flow of emotions. In our bodies, the water element represents vessels. It represents circulation. Please I'll and show I your believe page. that if the water element is out of balance, that there's an overflow of emotion, excessive crying. It could be sadness. It could mean depression. If your water element is balanced, there is a free flowing of emotion, of expression. There is equal giving and receiving of love. So when you are ready, color in opposite to the red, to the fire. So right beneath it, color in water. And when reflecting on the element of water, I like to think, how do I relate to the people around me? How do I express love? How do I want love to be expressed to me? That's something that you can be mindful of when reflecting on the element of water. If you can just show the your creation again, please. For, yeah. Let's see, thank you. And just bring it closer to the camera so that they can, thank you. So you have fire on top and then water directly underneath. And if you're the kind of person who tends to bottle up your emotions, it's believed that you have a blocked water flow. And when you're ready, you can take the color green 
and color in the element of nature. So on the right side of the circle of the wheel, so we have fire, water, nature. So we'll color in nature. And nature represents the unseen force of the earth. It represents change. It represents the transition of seasons. It represents transformation when fall turns into winter and winter turns into spring. That is known as the force of nature. And if a person has an imbalance of the element of nature, they may be resistant to change. They may be hesitant to try something new. There might be fear of change. If your nature element is balanced, you go with the flow of nature. You easily change or you're receptive to change. Balanced nature means growth and development, especially for the person's soul, person's spirituality. And when reflecting on the element of nature, I like to think about what changes, what transformations are happening in my life? Where am I resistant to change? Something to be mindful of. Am I blocking the force of nature? Am I trying to force against nature? So I'll show you again. There's fire, water, there's nature. Just two elements left directly across from nature, we have the element of, of mineral. So nature directly across is mineral. And mineral represents ancient wisdom, the knowledge that's been passed on to us from our ancestors. It represents intuitive knowledge, intuitive wisdom. It means knowing your truth, knowing your purpose. You may have heard it said before, I know it in my bones. And when you say that, it means that you have this intuitive knowing of something. And the Dagara people believe that within our skeletons, within our bones, 
we have knowledge stored from our ancestors. We have a library of intuitive knowledge that is more than enough for us to complete our purpose on earth. So you can color in your mineral element. When a person has an imbalance of mineral, they may be struggling to find their purpose. They may be struggling to find meaning, to find knowledge. They may be on a quest for knowledge. When your mineral element is balanced, you have a solid knowing of who you are, where you come from, and what your purpose is. So we'll just color that in. And the final element, you guessed it, is earth. And that is in the very center of the medicine wheel. And we shall color that in yellow. So right at the center is earth. And that will be yellow. I have a question from one of the participants. Sure, go for it. Would difficulty with grief be the green color? Would it be, that means it's out of balance? Absolutely. Or it could be water as well. Um, grief, let's say, is a response to a transition that's happened in one's life, maybe the passing on of an elder or uh, some, a loved one. And there is maybe a resistance to that truth of nature of change. Death is a part of nature. It's a part of the cycle of life. And grief is a response to that. The processing of grief um, can also be associated with water, being able to mourn, to cry, to express your grief would be associated with the element of water. That's a great question. And earth represents protection. It represents safety, represents nurturing and growth. In our bodies, earth is represented by our skin, according to the Dagara people. And when you have balanced earth element, you are a nurturing person. You're a caring and compassionate person. You work towards creating rather than destroying. If your earth element is unbalanced, there may be anxiety, a lack of safety, fear, a lack of self-care, a lack of caring for oneself or others. And when it comes to mindfulness, when reflecting on the earth element, I like to think, how am I caring for myself? 
How do I keep myself safe? How do I keep others safe? How do I nurture myself? How do I nurture others for their growth and development? So once your medicine wheel is complete, it'll look something like this. I've made a little a larger one for you to see. Turn it. So we have fire, water, nature, mineral, and earth at the center. And if everyone's almost finished up creating their art, I would ask that you turn your camera on and we can take a photo of it. What a wonderful experience, Tanisha. It was so empowering and educating. Thank you. Thank you for your attention, everyone. Let's see everybody. Oh, wow, so beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Wow. Anita. What a creative way. Beautiful. Amazing. We have a lot of, uh, oh, some individuals like, would like to learn more. So if, do you have a website you can share? Or um, I can, if you want, I can post your Instagram or anything because a lot of individuals are saying thank you and grateful for the knowledge that you've shared. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. And um, it's just my first name dot last name. Um, if you want to learn more about the Dagara tribe and um, West African indigenous spirituality, I can definitely recommend some of the books that were written by Maladoma Patrice Somme. Um, and you can just Google Dagara Web Medicine Wheel or um, uh, Dagara um, Elements and he'll show up in Google. So he's got a couple of books um, of water and spirit and he talks about his initiation process into becoming an elder of the Dagara tribe. He also has some lectures online, some one hour lectures on each of the elements. So if you want to go into greater depth on what each of the elements mean, he is one of the most uh, prominent teachers on, on Dagara spirituality. I'll put his name in the chat. So if you want to You know what we can Ooh. offer, Tanisha? Mm -hmm. Yes, if you email me, then I can email all the participants today with that information. Oh, sure. Okay, I'll yeah, do let's that. Let's do that because there's a lot of interest. Yeah, <laughs> lots and lots of interest. Uh, I we've come to the end of this workshop. If you have any final words, Tanisha? Um, yeah, I just, um, I, I, some things that I wanted to say, like five truths, five truths that I've learned from my study of this indigenous spirituality. Um, if you were to gather anything from the creation story of the Dagara West African tribe, I'd have to say that number one, it's a truth that we were born full with all the knowledge that we need to fulfill our purpose. Number two, we are enough. 
like I said before, all of the wisdom, all of the knowledge that we need to fulfill our purpose is stored in our bones, in our bodies. We have all that we need to fulfill our purpose. Number three, you have a divine purpose. You have a purpose of some kind and your purpose is to find that on this earth. And number four, your soul is able to heal the world. This is a truth that the Dagara people believe in wholeheartedly, that everyone comes to this earth with a specific medicine, a specific elixir that can create change in the world. And number five, you are not disposable. There is no disposable human. As colonialism, as the transatlantic slave trade has caused many to believe, you know, certain humans are disposable. The Dagara people and their spirituality firmly believe that no human is disposable, that we are each equally valuable and we're here to fulfill a purpose. So that's sort of the last wisdom, last words I'd like to share. Thank you so much everyone for your attention. It was so great to share this uh, storytelling with you and this, uh, this ancient wisdom. I feel very enlightened and fulfilled. Thank you so much. Uh -huh, look at all the hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, everyone, we will email you once Tanisha has the capacity and time to send the link. I will email you all uh, follow up links for learning. So thank you so much. Enjoy Monday family day with the loved ones within your home. Tanisha, bless. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you.